Today we'll be going over the laws of planetary motion, uh, originally uh, established by Johannes Kepler, a German astronomer, mathematician, and astrologer uh, in the 17th century. Um, he uh, established these three different laws, and the first one, the law of orbits, then the law of areas, and then also the law of periods. He discovered these three laws or formulated them when he was studying the heavens, or I guess that'd be space. And the first law of orbits states that uh, all planets move in elliptical orbits with the sun at one focus, and the planet is not at the other focus. Uh, here we can see the first law of orbits, and this is a diagram that I drew. Uh, showing it and first off we will have our minor axis which will be the shorter side of the orbit and the major axis the longer way and as you can see it's elliptical in shape uh, not an exact circle and the sun will be at one focus and along this elliptical path we'll have the periphalon which will be the closest point to the sun and the aphelion the farthest point from the sun and here it would be a planet in the orbit, okay? And next up, we have the law of areas. And basically, this one says a line that connects a planet to the sun sweeps out equal in, uh, that connects a planet to the sun sweeps out equal area in equal time. And basically, so if this triangle right here has equal area to this triangle here, the time it takes for it to go to here to here will be the same as the time it takes to go from here to here. Same for any two triangles connecting uh, to the sun and the planet's motion. So these two will be equal in time, or the dis time it takes to cover this distance, if the areas of these two points are the same. And so if the areas of two triangles connecting to the planet are the same, the time it takes to cover that distance will be the same. Simple enough? Okay. Last, lastly, we have the law of periods. And the law of periods states that the square of the period T, period being the time it takes to make a revolution, of any planet is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis. So... We have the period squared, and then we have the semi-major axis cube. Now, what was the semi-major axis? Well, if you remember back from the law of orbits on the diagram, we had the major axis labeled, which was the long axis. So the semi-major axis would be half of that. So I just have it as x right here. Now, the previous uh, two laws were more theoretical and didn't really have an equation but all of these can be said to be true for all planets and all solar systems uh, but this one will actually have an equation that we'll get to in just a moment now to derive the equation for kepler's third law of mo planetary motion so we'll start off with our uh, gravity gravity equation and that will be g times m1, m2 over r squared, and then our centripetal force equation, and that will be mv squared over r, okay? And since the gravitational forces, fg, is the centripetal force in this case, because we're dealing with planetary motion, and that's what, caught, and that's, and gravity is what holds planets in their orbit, uh, we can set them equal to each other. So Fg equals Fc, or G m1 times m2 over r squared equals m1 v squared over r. Okay, and if we factor out m over r from both sides, we'll get G times m over r equals v squared. Now remember, for circular motion, velocity equation is v equals 2 pi r over t. Now plug that v in up here, and we will get... Uh, g m times m2 over r equals 4 pi squared r squared over t squared okay 
Now we'll uh, multiply t squared by both sides to get rid of the fraction, and we'll get t squared g m squared or m2 over r equals 4 pi squared r squared. Now we'll multiply both sides by r to get rid of this, and we'll get t squared g m2 equals 4 pi squared r cubed. Now all that's left is to divide both sides by g over m, and we'll get the period t squared equals uh, 4 pi squared over gm times r cubed. Simple as that. So that is our period squared, and that would be our uh, uh, semi-major axis cubed. Uh, that is it for a third law and deriving this equation. We're next, on, next up, we'll move on to actual uh, problems. Okay, now let's take an actual problem using Kepler's third law of motion. Uh, I got this example problem off the internet, and it goes like this. The planet Mercury travels around the sun with a mean orbital radius of 5.85 times 10 to the 10th power. The mass of the sun is 1.99 times 10 to the 30th power kilograms. Use Newton's version of Kepler's law to determine how long it takes Mercury to orbit the sun. Now, we just got this equation, and it was t squared equals t squared equals 4 pi squared over the, the gravitational constant over the mass. Now, looking up at this, we can see that the mass will be this right here, and the uh, radius will be this right here. And so we already have the mass and the radius, and the gravitational constant will be 6.667 times 10 to the negative 11th. Now, we just need to solve for t, right? And so let's plug these in. t squared will equal, draw a thing here. So we'll start off with the gravitational constant, 6.667 times 10 to the negative 11th times the mass 1.99 times 10 to the 30th so on top of that will be oh wait this will be cubed radius cubed uh we'll have 4 pi squared and, and then all that will be timed by 5.85 times 10 to the 10th cubed. Okay, now we can solve this using our tr trusty handy dandy calculator, um, which I will have right here. So first off, we will put, we'll put in uh, 6.667 times 10 to the 11th, or wait, negative 11th, times 1.99 times 10 to the 30th. That'll, that'll give us an answer of 1.326733 times 10 to the 20th. So 1.326733 times 10 to the 20th. Now, next up we can do 4 times, here I'll put this parentheses, 4 times pi squared, okay, and that will be divided by the answer we just got. I'll just put that because for simplicity, and that'll give us this answer. Holy moly, that's really low. So then we'll have 2.9756 1134 times 
10 to the negative 19th. Okay. And that will be times 5.85 5.85 times 10 to the 10th cubed. So next up, we will find 5 point Sorry about that. 5.85 times, here I'll put this in parentheses, 5.85 times 10 to the 10th. I'll put that to the third power. Okay. And then, so since those are multiplied, we'll multiply them together. So our answer we just got, which would be the cube, the radius cubed, will be timed by 2.97561139 times 10 to the negative 19th. So that'll give us 5.9. Five seven two, and then we'll, we'll just do that times ten to the thirteenth, and that equals t squared. So we'll have to square root this. So t will equal seven seven one eight three zero four, and then I think I'm pretty sure that's seconds. So we will f now find, so divide it by 60, that'll be minutes, divide it, or divide it by 60, that'll be hours, divide it by 24, and we get 89 days.